when you do this work and you start convincing the nervous system that there is no danger, then we can align more with like regular animals. You know, the human animal is the only animal that can see the truth and reality in their perception as more real than what's right in front of them. So if you take a herd of zebra, okay, and a predator is introduced, the whole herd will go wild, right? They'll start shaking, they'll start bumping into each other and they'll try to run and all this stuff. And you'll see them all getting signals from each other. The moment the predator is, is removed, okay? So the lion walked in, it got a better idea, it walked away. They might take a few minutes, they're gonna shake it off. They're gonna go back to grazing. They don't make meaning out of the predator. If it's there, their nervous systems are, are firing. And when it leaves, it goes down. Human beings can't let go. We need to we need to do the work in order to let go or else the reality here in our minds becomes realer than what's going on right in front of us. And we become the victims of confirmation bias. We can't, con we can't convince ourselves heartily enough that we're okay because our nervous system is in sustained fight or flight. And this is what the work does. Hey, Better Together fans. Hey, Hill Squad. It's Mr. Maria Menounos. <laughs> Kevin Undergaro subbing in for my beautiful wife, Maria. Uh, bringing you part two of our incredible interview with Nicole Saxon. So for anyone out there um, that is suffering from any kind of chronic physical condition, uh, be it migraine, heartburn, rashes, but to other extremes could be... Um, cancer, back problems, uh, you name it. We, um, Nicole really uh, gets the root of it and how much our emotions factor into this and then what you can do, of course, to resolve it. Um, if you have not seen part one or heard part one, I encourage you to do so. Um, but uh, that being said, let's listen or watch part two of our interview with Nicole Sachs. I mean... It's like, I'm, I, I know with Kelsey's stomach and, you know, and Kelsey, can we talk about your stomach? Yeah, of course. You know, it's been, make, tell her a little bit about, like you guys maybe talked a little bit about it already. Uh, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I think it's so crazy. Like all these things you're saying, Nicole, and you and I chatted and I'm like, yep, yep, yep. And I mm -hmm. actually had an acu, I literally wrote it down because I had an acupuncturist tell me he was like, exactly what you said about experiencing rage and like suppressed rage. And when he put the needles in my stomach, I felt like my stomach was on fire. And he yeah. literally said to me, he was like, that's suppressed rage. And I was like, I'm not a rageful person. I don't like, I'm not an angry person. Exactly. Holy shit though. And then it's like, you start to really think about it. And I've just now recently after starting to listen to you, I've started to journal. I need to more, but anyways, I mean the stomach, the stomach thing is I've had stomach issues my whole life and in the last I would say three to four years they've gotten significantly worse um and now it's just manifested to where it's like a 24-7 yeah. football in my gut and yeah yeah so here's what I want to say to you Kelsey about mm -hmm. your stomach your stomach pain is her back pain and her back pain is his migraines and his migraines are her fibromyalgia. It doesn't matter how it is expressed through your body. The reason that you have stomach problems is because it's, it's um, something your brain is easily conditioned to. You've had stomach problems your whole life. And because the mind body system seeks the path of least resistance, probably the reason I got back pain is I do have a normal abnormality. It, my spine certainly doesn't look like a, a spine in a kid's health class, you know, at all. Mm -hmm. And so usually it's, it's a bit of a path of least resistance. And I have thousands of stories about people who are like, you know, I had pelvic pain. My grandmother had such horrible pelvic pain. She killed herself. And then all one day I'm 21 years old and I get pelvic pain. These things are happening way too often to be coincidences. Mm. And so Kelsey's stomach always been an issue. You probably define yourself to some extent as a person with stomach issues. You know, that's just part of who I am. I've always had to eat a certain way. I've always had to carry myself in a certain way. Yes, I've heard um, you say these happens. things. Literally, of I've course, heard you say of these course. things. I mean, <clears throat> it couldn't be more normal to do that. You know, I became the girl with the bad back, right? We, mm -hmm. all, we all kind of carry these labels, whether we like them or not. And so what I will promise you, Kelsey, is if you are doing this work, 
immerse yourself. I can give you all sorts of resources. Your stomach problems are a thing of the past. And I have no doubt. And when I say that to people, they go, oh, I don't know. I said, borrow my confidence, borrow my confidence, because not only do I have my own body as my constant science experiment, I've worked with thousands and thousands. If you count my podcast, millions Mm. of people around the world who are writing to me and doing this work and they're healing. It's incredible because all the stomach is, is a space that shuts down during fight or flight. You know, if anyone knows anything about neuroscience, when your body is in, when your nervous system perceives you as danger, one of the first things that happens is your respiration and your circulation become more able to function because you might need to run or you might need to fight for your life. And one of the first things that shuts down is digestion. Mm. The last thing you need to do when you're fighting the woolly mammoth is need to go to the bathroom or be need to be hungry. You know, everything just slows down and it causes tremendous problems. And so to understand that just on the very basic physical level is so is sometimes really helpful in people cultivating the belief that they need Mm -hmm. in order to open the door. The belief opens the door, the belief and the willingness open the door to the possibility of doing the work, which was my whole story. And then patience and kindness for yourself, which is like, you know, it's okay. It's okay. It's been a long road. Well, and it's so interesting because you're a hundred percent right. And I think when I think about the fight or flight thing, the last four years, especially like the last two were like crazy fight or flight for me in my workplace. And that's when they got like significantly worse. It stomach. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And so, so Nicole, do you advise people who work in, let's say, or in toxic families or toxic work environments? Is there anything to do beyond the journaling? That you would advise. It's, it's, it's a good, it's a great question. So one of the questions I got the most when I used to sit on the Sarno panel, because the way we would do it is four of us would come up on the stage with Dr. Sarno. We would tell our personal stories and then the audience, which was always like a lecture hall of a few hundred people, they would run a mic and they would ask us questions. So the Q and a part was, was long. It was about two hours. And I used to get the same question over and over and over again, which was, I hate my job. I know my boss is toxic. I go in there every day and I know it's causing me tremendous anger and rage, but I cannot quit it. I can't afford to quit it. I will never be able to make this money if I leave, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I, and Dr. Sarno would always say the same thing. And I say the same thing. You don't need to change anything in your life. You just need to know how you feel because the whole point of this dance between the brain and the nervous system is if the nervous system perceives your repressed emotions, how angry you are, how much you hate the boss, how much you fantasize about killing him, how much (laughs) you find yourself to be a failure because you can't bring yourself to kill him, right? Whatever, whatever you've got there. Or you don't have a better job or you're not the boss yourself. Or you're not, exactly. Or or your father was right, right? We always go back to, you know, your parents were right about you all all along, you know, and I'm being a bit facetious about this because we do need to lighten it up because God knows if we take ourselves too seriously. Or or, or, or again, for the kids that I raise, oh, your parents were wrong. Because your parents you told go. you you were a rock star yeah. and you were going to the moon, and now you're not. You don't feel you are, and so mom and, and dad life were is wrong. a horrible yes disappointment. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> whatever it is, we all have our huge bag of garbage that we're dragging with us. Sorry, it's your human being. You can't get out without oh my it. God. So whatever that is, your brain and your nervous system perceive that bag of garbage as a greater predator then your stomach problems or your back problems or your headaches or whatever. The only way we can ever convince the nervous system that it's wrong is to turn toward the feelings and feel them and know them and be present with the truth. Then the symptoms go away. Now, to your point, Kevin, if at that point, You are a symptom-free person in alignment with yourself, knowing your rights, knowing your highest good, understanding that you've been shutting yourself down all these years. Might you choose to now quit that job knowing that like, you know who you are? Perhaps, but it's not necessary. The, the point of this whole dance between the brain and the nervous system is information. Dr. U, Dr. Sarno used to say, my um, prescription is knowledge. Once people understand what's going on here and you turn toward the feelings, you feel them, you know them, and it can take a minute because we, we've spent, you know, however many years repressing things, you're not going to walk out in two weeks. You know, I mean, this is, this is going to take a second, but when you do this work, and you start convincing the nervous system that there is no danger, 
then we can align more with like regular animals. You know, the human animal is the only animal that can see the truth and reality in their perception as more real than what's right in front of them. Mm. So if you take a herd of zebra, okay, and a predator is introduced, the whole herd will go wild, right? They'll start shaking, they'll start bumping into each other and they'll try to run and all this stuff. And you'll see them all getting signals from each other. The moment the predator is, is removed, okay? So the lion walked in, it got a better idea, it walked away. They might take a few minutes, they're gonna shake it off, they're gonna go back to grazing. They don't make meaning out of the predator. If it's there, their nervous systems are, are firing, and when it leaves, it goes down. Human beings can't let go. We need, to, we need to do the work in order to let go, or else the reality here in our minds becomes realer than what's going on right in front of us, and we become the victims of confirmation bias. We can't, con we can't convince ourselves heartily enough that we're okay because our nervous system is in sustained fight or flight, and this is what the work does. It brings you from fight or flight to rest and repair. You get conscious of the unconscious anger and rage. Like Kelsey said, I'm not an angry person. I promise you, you're really pissed off about a ton of shit and, and, and it's okay. And it, it, it flies in the face of your self-definition. That's okay. This is where the compassion comes in. You're bigger than this. We're bigger than this moment, you know? And, and there's so much going on that we don't know. And when you learn it, the symptoms go away. But I will say that the pain or the fatigue, or the autoimmune, <clears throat> whatever brings you here is the biggest, littlest part. It knocks on the door of this process, but as you kind of quoted me at the beginning, it just brings you to the precipice of the truths that have been awaiting your acknowledgement. And once you start seeing them, the pain goes, but then it's like, what do I want to do with my life? What kind of partner do I want to be? What kind of parent Oof. do I want to be? What kind of contribution do I want to make to the, I mean, it's, Amazing. One of the things what I happened? said to Gabby Bernstein about you know, my wife, Maria, was that she is a Ferrari going 160 with a tractor trailer of cement. You would say garbage, but garbage and cement <laughs> together. And, and it's like if she can learn to lose that tractor trailer, oh, my God, that Ferrari is just going to sail. And some it's people are scared of that. Gabby, Gabby does my work, by the way. She's been on my podcast. Um, uh, yeah, no people, but believe it or not, and this is when, when the work gets a bit deeper, we have to look into our terror over what we might be if we let go of that garbage. What might I yes. be if I were this Ferrari? Yeah. Would I be able to control yes. it? Yeah. What, what, yeah. Yeah. Or I won't have this cr these crutches anymore. Maybe I don't have that story anymore. Right. Like, it's, oh yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah. And again, with awareness, and I think that's probably a few steps ahead of where, when you start with Nicole's program, you end up getting there. I think, you know, okay, if you have cancer, uh, um, this is amazing. If you have, uh, like I have uh, Hajimoto's, if you have, great. But I think for other people out there that are having the migraines or heartburn or fatigue. Yes, heartburn's a big or, one. Right? If you're having all these things, I just... More than likely, they're 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 um, triggers for something greater that's going to come. But if you can start doing this work now, you'll not only be relieved from them, you're really going to prevent the darker stuff that's going to come. You know, for me, I was like you, 100%. I had IBS, like when I was in my early 20s, and that just kept going. And now, you know, and then to Hajimoto's, which is a fight or flight thing. I didn't know that the Navy SEALs, this is the number one affliction of the Navy SEALs. I didn't know. I thought like, oh, why wow, do I... Oh, wow, I didn't either. Yeah, yeah. I was like, Makes wait. Makes sense, though. Right? And I was like, why do yeah. I have this? This seems like a feminine thing. Like, no, it's f fight or flight, fight or flight. And, um, but I think now looking back... If, if I could have done the work then, and I'm fine, I'm going to do the work now, so I'm very happy to do it. But I think for other people out there that just be aware of the kind of little things you have on the horizon that you don't think are really that big a deal, but, you know, it's there, there's a, there's a me even if it's not getting your period, I keep going back to it, because that, mm -hmm. that blows me away. I have a lot of friends who, like, for years haven't had their period, like, in their 20s, and I'm like, What? A ton, yeah. a ton, me being one of them. And then I talk to a million and one other people and they're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, years. Like, that's It's crazy. amazing. And, and, and one of the things I want to say about the human body is that, you know, there's that cliche, we only understand 6% of our brain. I don't know what we're up to in 2021. Maybe we got, we've gotten to nine or 10. I don't, I'm, I don't know. But 
we don't understand nobody. I don't, the best scientists at Harvard and Mayo and wherever you want to go that you think is the top tier. Nobody understands the exact reason that the human body behaves as it does. Mm -hmm. And I want to bring in long COVID for a moment because long COVID has been all over the news. It's everywhere. And I am working with people all the time now. I mean, I don't do private practice anymore. Just uh, FYI, people are always writing me, me yeah. now. And I'm like, no, I don't have time for private practice because I'm blasting chat to the world, but I yeah. have a lot of resources and people are doing the work and then writing me and coming back to me, healing completely from months and months of long COVID. Okay. It's all the same. It is the dance between the brain and the nervous system. It's the sustained fight or flight. And so when you talk about, you know, Hashimoto's or all the, or, or cancer or not getting your period, there, the human body is going to protect itself because the brain and the nervous system see your affliction, whatever it is, as a protective mechanism against feeling this, this reservoir, no matter how it needs to. It will protect itself because if your nervous system asked your permission or your opinion before it gave you a reflex to save your life, we, there, we would be extinct as a population. You know, um, I tell this story sometimes about 20 years ago, I was in London and I was having a great day and I was downtown. It was a really busy day. And I looked to um, my, I guess I looked to my left and no traffic was coming. So I just stepped out into the street, typical New Yorker, no respect, no respect for, for lights or for whatever. And, um, by the time the double-decker bus whizzed past my nose to the point where I literally felt it this close to me, I was already back on the curb. I have no recollection how I got back there because my nervous system, without asking my opinion, without saying, hey, you think um, maybe we don't want to die and jump back onto the curb, mm -hmm. did it for me. The reflex was like lightning and I saved my life. It saved my life. That's what's happening. When you get a, a symptom when Kelsey gets a stomach, you know, problem and she feels that football, that is you jumping back onto the curb. There's been a trigger mm. that your nervous system perceives as a predator that is so great. It might kill you feeling how angry a non angry person is. It might kill you. Now you might say intellectually, of course it won't kill you. Your nervous system doesn't know that your nervous system perceives your repressed emotional world as a greater predator than your physical pain. And it will always choose your physical pain, which is a posture of safety. And when people get that, and when people th get that, I am not talking about hippy dippy therapist stuff. I know I'm a therapist, but I am not talking about this as a therapist. I'm talking about this as a clinician and as an expert in mind, body medicine, this is what's happening in the physical system. And we can't overcome it by continuing to put a shot in the place in the body that is hurting. Because even if, you know, some people have a surgery and they're like, oh, well, I had a back surgery, but my back doesn't hurt anymore. And I say, oh, okay. <clears throat> What else is going on? Oh, well, I have this terrible hip thing, but I'm in physical therapy for that. It will move around. Yeah. And I, I know that this is so an annoy, such an annoying thing, but it's true. And like, I come with such passion for people to understand the truth. And I think of the people that, um, when I think of the very few people that, uh, and I, really very few, I maybe on one hand, who don't have these physical symptoms, they are the ones who are just kind of lighter and things mm -hmm. have rolled off them, and they have this kind of... Super laid back. You know, I think of Maria's dad, and I think he got diabetes, type 1 diabetes. He's had it for 54 years. He's a, he's a... People would call him a medical marvel. In fact, MIT wants to study his body because there's no loss of vision, no numbness in the limbs, no loss wow. of limbs, nothing. And he works 14, 15 hours a day, and pro probably more like a, like a 28 or 29-year-old for what he physically can do. Um but he is of the belief that he was so stressed out in his late teens and early 20s over his parents and feeding them and pressure and this and that. That's when he, he got these nosebleeds and then it was diabetes. He's convinced it's that. And he's worked over the 50-some-odd year period. He hasn't gone into the, the doing the childhood work and things like that. I think for him, um, he's just different. What he does is he has found a way to stay present and if there's things that are upsetting to him he is he doesn't sweep it under the rug but he's just like i don't want to i don't want to sit there i don't want to sit there in that pain i'm going to go and garden i'm going to go and he has his own little things but but i think of someone exactly. like him 
and he's one of the you know he does have the diabetes, but I think of what he's been able to do physically because of his his mindset, and I think most of us don't have that, so we have to we have to open the hood and do the work. That, that's exactly what I was thinking as you were talking. You know, yes, yeah, some people are graced with that kind. of I mean, of, one and uh, like I literally on one hand, I think I know rare. three people. Yes. In my whole some life, people, <laughs> some people are graced with that. And the reason that I teach what I teach is because, you know, short of putting a magic wand over someone and making their personality like that, um, they, there's there needs to be some sort yeah. of a rubric to do the work. And especially today, because we are so much more plugged in. You know, he came from a village with no running water, and so right. he's not going to be addicted to his phone. He does, By the way, he's on Facebook. He has his phone. He has fun with it. But, man, that thing goes right on the... Oh, Forget yeah. it. He, we lose it half the time. <laughs> and he's Greek dancing. He's doing ecstatic dancing. Yeah. He doesn't know it's ecstatic dancing, but he's doing all of these yeah, practices. That's awesome. But because, you know, he's, you, for us who, especially the young generation, you know, we're born with an iPhone in their butt. Like, yeah, you, so <laughs> I know. I have so, a few. Right? Yeah, right? And there's so much stimulation. So it's inevitable that we're going to have to deal with these mm-hmm. things. And um, I love the way of dealing with this. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm excited to get to work myself. Kelsey, what were you going to say? I was going to ask Nicole. I want you to talk a little bit about, more about um, the what is it? COVID, COVID long haul. Yeah. And what everyone's oh, yeah, experienced because right. I just think that like so. Wait, could, Nicole, is that are you talking about the mental ramifications? Are you talking about no, people who've physical. actually people have actually physical. had COVID. Oh yeah. So have you heard Kevin about all this COVID long haul stuff yet? No, no, it's another thing I'm to worry about. Excellent. Let me me get on that. Okay. No, no, no. Don't, don't worry about (sighs) it. But but here's, here's the thing that's happening and you can look up, um, Anderson Cooper did a piece on it on 60 minutes. Um, uh, Michael Barbaro did a piece on it yesterday on the daily, which is the New York times podcast, but it's everywhere. And what it is, is that certain people, and I don't know enough about the personalities of the people, but there's definitely a, a, a sect of society, a, pe- a sect of people that got relatively mild COVID, so did not have discernible heart or lung damage okay. or brain damage or any co- kind that can be documented, that for some reason after the virus resolved generally, so they weren't sick anymore, have gotten these long haul symptoms, among them brain fog, chest pain, trouble breathing, mental confusion, severe fatigue, body pains, headaches. So of course, COVID long haul, this starts to be something people, and I I have my, my ear to the door of all this stuff always because this is my work. And I start hearing about COVID long haul and I think, huh. That sounds awful like the stuff that I'm constantly treating in people who didn't have COVID and who have been under tremendous stress. And then I thought to myself, hmm, what's the worst possible shame, fear, grief, and stress you can be under? I don't know, getting a deadly disease in a global pandemic that just shut down the entire world. Mm -hmm. You know, in the piece in 60 Minutes, all the people they were interviewing had gotten COVID in March. Can you imagine getting COVID in March? No. If you're out there and you got COVID in March, I send my heart directly out to you because it was terrifying. In March, we were, we were, when my kids got, when I got groceries, I was with paper, with yes, plastic yes. gloves, wiping down yeah. the freaking groceries. Yeah. I mean, we were in a state of panic as a society. There was so much uncertainty. There was a, there was a sense also of like, um, like an ostracizing quality of getting COVID like, Oh, so-and-so had, did you hear they had, they got COVID, you know, it was, Mm -hmm. it was just, there was so much stigma attached to it. No wonder that these people, their nervous systems got caught in that fight or flight place. Mm -hmm. And then of course it opens it up to the reservoir of whatever other shit that they had in their garbage bag, which we all know we all do. Okay. Nobody's, no one's immune to that to open up. So I knew COVID long haul was among the, under the umbrella of TMS. So I don't know if you've ever heard Dr. Sarno talk about TMS. It's just an acronym. It's called tension myositis or myoneural syndrome. The the words don't matter except for TMS is an umbrella under which all these things we're talking about live. Everything from not getting your period to back pain to symptoms of autoimmune disease to migraines to COVID long haul. It's just under this umbrella. It's an easy way to say it. So I knew that COVID long haul was TMS. I knew it in, intuitively because I've been doing this work for so many years, to over 25 if you count in my own body. But there was really nobody to tell and certainly nobody to listen. So I just kind of was just like talking about it on my own Instagram. I have an IGTV series. I made a video on it. Mm-hmm. I put it on my YouTube channel. 
And then about a month ago, I got an email from this lovely young girl. Her name is Lika, and she's in the Netherlands. And she said, I suffered from COVID long haul so severely that I was certain that I was going to die. I could, she's 35 years old, in excellent shape. I couldn't walk from my couch to my kitchen for 10 months. I couldn't bathe myself. I was giving myself sponge baths. I couldn't wear a bra for months and months because I, the, just the compression of the bra on my chest. I lost tons of weight. In the evening, I would call my mother, not sure I would make it through the night. I gave her my passwords for my computer and for my, my different things so, so that somebody would know them if I were to die in the night. This is how that girl was functioning. She said, I um, listened to a Dutch podcast, a podcast I personally have never heard of. It's in the Dutch language. I don't under even understand. Somebody was talking about your work, meaning mine. I Googled you. I downloaded your online course. I did the work. And she wrote me, I'm totally better. I painted my bedroom yesterday. I went on a three mile bike ride and I said, I need to get you on my podcast. So I interviewed her on my podcast about I think it's about a month ago, I've received hundreds of letters from people around the world saying, oh my God, I'm getting better. My headaches are down from every day to once a week. I, I, so she I had took a rage walk yesterday and, with a friend. So Nicole, she, you, you were able to discover, she was able to discover rage and shame and all of those things. Well, the first thing with people with COVID long haul, they usually just have to excavate the amount of fear and stress mm. they were under just having the COVID. Okay. You know, COVID long haul in itself has a, has a genesis because of the amount of terror and especially people who got it early in the pandemic. But and then she's basically um, said that now she then she oh, it opened her up to knowing that she had to do this work. She was like, oh, my God, I always used to get those, you know, uh, that TMJ or I always used to get that heartburn. And now I know why. And so now she started doing the work and now she's living her best life like she's an incredible woman. But all I'm saying is this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. And 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 all I hear on these news programs, which makes me crazy, is there's no solution to COVID long haul. We're just at the very beginning of understanding it. It's going to be years and years. And when you hear these accounts of these people, I'm like, these people aren't going to make it years and years. Some of these people are going to take their lives. Like we need to help people understand that COVID long haul, it's very serious because it feels serious. Just like my debilitating back pain felt serious when I couldn't walk to the bathroom and my parents were carrying me. It was humiliating, but it was no more serious than one is no more serious than the other. It's the mind-body connection. It's exactly what's going on with this sustained fight or flight. When it gets to rest and repair, the symptoms go away. Nicole, what about this for um, a try? If if uh, I'm take the time, journalists out, I get to the core of my rage, my shame, and all of those things. Um, what are your what's your opinion on now? I take that to a really good EMDR person to help me tap mm -hmm. it out. What do you yeah. think of that? Amazing. Amazing, beautiful, okay. perfect. Okay. There's, you know, it takes a village to, to keep us healthy. And I think as long as people understand that the only one that can do this work for yourself is you. So like, yes, going to therapy is fantastic. I love EMDR. I love tapping. I love holistic. I love the whole body approach. But because you're the only person living in your particular nervous system, and since it's your nervous system that's deciding that you're in danger because you're being a human and your perceptive life is more real than your actual life, only you can can do this work and, and get and get the realizations and have the epiphanies and the moments of awakening. But once you start becoming more aware, yes, yes, grab hold of it and do all the things. You know, even though acupuncture is a physical solution. I love acupuncture. You just can't mm -hmm. only use acupuncture because yes. your nervous system won't be convinced to stop jumping off the curb because of acupuncture. Right. But it can certainly be amazing as like a holistic practice. Like with Kelsey, and again, I only make the regular guy guess, but with Kelsey, it's like I said, like your stomach's on fire and I think it's good. The acupuncture will help put the fire down for a minute or even put it out. But what is gonna what's igniting that what's fire exactly and who's gonna what's gonna happen next time someone lights a match right and right. what's lighting the match and that's yeah. where your work i think comes in yeah. nicole i i was taught by my therapist um that uh you really have to get to the subconscious and unconscious mm -hmm. um you know it's not enough to just kind of sit three days a week with a standard therapist although it's great 
But do you, are you of that belief too, that you've that's, got to well, get that's, deeper? You, what you said is you're saying exactly what we're saying without knowing it. That's exactly what you're doing. Okay. Exactly. So if I, I would say I could count on my hand how many times I've been angry in my life. That's not true. I just, I'm not an angry person, mm -hmm. but there's so much anger in my subconscious and I, and I'm not comfortable with anger. Why? Mm -hmm. Because my dad was a rageaholic. He was a daily drinker. And every time something happened that he didn't like, he would scream at the top of his lungs. He would call you every name in the book. So I made a decision consciously and unconsciously as a young child, anger is dangerous. It's mean. It makes people feel bad and there's no use for it. And that's how I lived my whole life Oof. until I realized yeah, I'm really freaking angry about certain things. And I don't necessarily need to take them out on other people the way my dad did, but I need to understand them in myself. I want to be an integrated person. I want to be a whole person. And that is the way you do it by understanding this unconscious world. So a hundred percent yes to your question. And and I, I, I know you. we've said it a couple of times, but it does go with this rage, but there's also shame, right? Oh, yes. And guilt. Um, and grief and, and grief. unfelt grief. Yeah. And, and, and when you don't feel like you have a right to your grief because everyone's like, turn the page, your feelings are no longer convenient for me, but it has to still live somewhere. I mean, that's why this work is so beautiful and so personal because it's for you. Yeah. Not everybody else wants to do it with you, but you can do it for you. I think it's, it's interesting because I remember some, I got acupuncture and certain needles, were, okay, they went in and then others were like, ah, and, I know. And I she, know. who I was working with, Vicky Vachalonis, who's done our show many times, was like, oh, that's grief, you know, where she hit. And um, when, you know, talking about a, a grief, you said something, I think there's people out there like who don't feel as though they're entitled to grief. Maybe you, oh, I have both my parents or I was born, with, or I was born exactly. well to do or I'm healthy. I'm a good athlete. I, can, you know, how, who am I to grief and, and, right. and, right. And so it's, that's a huge one. That's a huge yeah. reason for emotional repression because, um, <sighs> we can always discount ourselves. And even in, in the situation where it's like, um, someone mistreated you, but you can see where they're coming from. Your feelings are still as valid. You still need to feel what it feels like, even if you can empathize. You know, that's why a lot of people are talking about um, toxic positivity these days. I know Brene Brown was talking about it, um, I think, last <laughs> oh, please. week. Please, can you tell me what this is? Because it already just speaks to me. Whatever toxic you just positivity? Said, yes, I don't know. I don't, I want the definition, but I'm like, okay, this some for some reason is makes perfect okay. sense to me so from what I'm guessing in my mind. Essentially what toxic positivity is, is that... Um, it, it, I could, in the most basic sense, it's, um, put your best face forward, you know, like a uh, brighten up, you know, um, man up, uh, you know, it, things aren't so bad. Uh, look on the bright side. That's like the most basic way, okay. but basically it's a, a toxic positivity is a straight up lie. Okay. It's about, it's about putting on some sort of a persona or some sort of an attitude toward life that allows you to, maybe for the moment on the surface, believe that things are better when underneath it creates rage, it creates self-deception, it creates shame, it creates grief, because we know when things aren't okay. And people lean toward toxic positivity because we're scared to tell the truth because first of all, we think people think we're a downer okay. or we're scared that we're not going to be loved and accepted or that people won't want to be around us. You know, if you dial human beings back to our most basic needs, it's a need for connection with other human beings. Mm -hmm. Because in like a, a primitive tribe, if you weren't connected to the tribe, they wouldn't feed you. They wouldn't clothe you. They wouldn't surround you with protection. You were going to die. Oh, and so we yeah. seek human connection above all else, or, however we need to be. Or we're taught that positivity leads to success. Mm. So we, we're taught like, you know, just at the base value, like be positive, good things will happen. So it's like, okay, I'm wearing a, I'm smiling. I'm wearing a, you know, I'm wearing yeah. a. Yeah. You know. And then you're going to die. You're going to die of yeah. the diseases that will come because you're such a liar to yourself. And, and here's another thing. And this is why I love Brene Brown's work because positivity doesn't actually lead to success. Vulnerability and honesty do. You know, you ever work with somebody and they're like some freaking per person who's like, hey, everything's great. And like you're looking around and it's so obvious not everything's great. Wouldn't you love it? If someone came up to you and be like, hey, guess what? I'm suffering too. Things aren't actually really great right now. We can do it together, though. We can we can find the path. 
but I'm hurting and you're hurting and I see you. Don't you, isn't that a totally different energy? Like, don't you trust that person so much more? Like, come on, man, it's all good. You know, it's all good is a really freaking terrible line because it's not all good. It's all whatever it is. (laughs) Yeah. Sometimes when people ask like, you good? I'm like, well, Oh my I just God. go, and I've learned to go. Yeah, I'm good because I, I just don't. Want to I had a friend. Get into the dialogue. I had a friend. Kevin, I forgot to show you this. Nicole, you'll appreciate this. He sent me a meme yesterday, and it was like someone asking another person if they were good, and the person responding was like, "Yeah, I'm fine." And there was like a sword going through their head, <laughs> and he yeah. was he literally was like, "This is you," and I was like, "Oh." Mm. It's like that mm. dog that's sitting at the table and everything's on fire and the dog's like, fine, this is fine. Have you guys seen that meme? Yes. <laughs> I'll send it to you. Well, that I'm one's the, a good one. Oh, God. But see, but like that person is bullshit. Like, that's the thing. I mean, let's really dial it down. Like, what do we want as human beings? We want to say, I see you and you see me. We're here together. Look yeah. at us. Like, that's what we want. That's the best feeling in the world. How do we escape this toxic positivity? Like, how, is it just acknowledging when it's happening? Honestly, I saw, I feel the same way for the, to answer that question as I feel about ex- exposing people to my work. Yeah. This is going to be a bottom up change. Okay. So if we're speaking about my work, my work is never going to be taught to you by, um, big pharma or the surgical model. Like you're not going to hear about it because somebody's telling you, Oh, this is what you should do about yourself. It's a bottom up thing. Each person has to decide how long do I want to suffer? This is my life. What do I choose to do to save my own life? And if we have, let's just say, you know, 2 billion people in the world, I know we have more, but whatever. All I'm saying is if each of those people does that, the problem is solved, right? So it would come from the bottom up, not the top down. And I'll say the same thing about toxic positivity. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Okay. That's, that's more than just a beautiful Buddhist saying, be the change. If, if, if I, the way I, I fight toxic positivity is exactly what you're seeing right now. I'm just myself. I don't care. There's going to be people who watch this interview and think I'm whatever, you know, think I'm, I don't know. But the point is I don't care because I'm just showing up as me. I'm showing up as flawed. I'm showing up as honest. I'm showing up as tender and sad about things and vulnerable and scared when I am. And that's how I fight toxic positivity because I have no interest in being part of it. And if enough people have no interest in being part of anything, it goes extinct. There you go. Beautiful. I think, you know, find Trevor Moad, who's a friend of ours, he does the show. He's, num- he's like the number one mm-hmm. mind coach in all of sports. And his big thing is he stays neutral. Yeah. That's his big mm-hmm. thing, neutrality. He's like, I just. And then you think of some people with Zen philosophies where, you know, they ride, they don't ride the highs very high and they don't ride the lows very low. It's, I always say it's like, take the kitty roller coaster in life. Yes. Just a little high, a little low, a little high, a little low. Mm. <laughs> you know, whereas my, I used to ride Space Mountain <laughs> and I still want to ride Space Mountain. But I, like I have Space Mountain. Right. Yeah. But I have to, I know you do. I can tell by your personality, but it's like the more we can just be on that kitty roller coaster, you know, I think the more we can deal. And I know it's a whole other, a whole other thing. Um, yeah, Nicole, you're really onto something here. And um, this is going to be this, uh, this is going to be the, for the century. You're going to see yes. a lot of, uh, a lot of, so I think for me, it's East meets West is best. You know, yeah. there's a, there's mm-hmm. a role for Western medicine, but we've had enough Western. Now it's time we have to bring in mm-hmm. some Eastern. We have to yeah. start bringing this stuff in and know that there is a, that there is a connection. Um, yeah, Nicole, it's so, so important. Nicole, what is the name of the podcast, please? And your Instagram so people can follow you and start uh, tuning your in website, every week. website, all your courses. All of it, yeah. All, the whole scam. Okay, well, it's kind of easy because a lot of it has the same name. So my, <laughs> my website is thecureforchronicpain.com. Mm-hmm. And my podcast is The Cure for Chronic Pain at, with Nicole Sachs. Um, and uh, from my website there's a resources page that links to everything. My Instagram is just my name at Nicole Sachs, L C S W. I tried to just get my name, but someone had it. So I guess Mm -hmm. Nicole Sachs out there, Mm -hmm. what's up, but I'm Nicole Sachs, L C S W no H in Nicole. Some people put an H in my name N I C O L E. And, um, my book is called the meaning of truth. You can get that on Amazon. And I have an online community on Facebook called Journal Speak with Nicole Sachs, where I've got thousands of people in conversation every day supporting one another. Um, 
And I don't know what else. I have a, I have a YouTube channel. I don't spend a lot of time there because I do my podcast every single week. And so there's just only so no, much. No, I can no, no, so much. And you, yeah, I, I think Nicole, like this is probably a separate part, but uh, yeah, you, you, so you don't end up like Maria. You've got a, I'm just saying as someone older than you, I've been in this business a long time in the media and, but yeah, I just want to see you conserve and kind of pace yourself because, um, you know, it's funny. Do you remember Audrey? I mean, you know from Breakfast at Tiffany's, Audrey right. Pepper. But one Pepper. of the things that people had said about her was she was so into giving and giving and giving and giving that that's why you know it, things ended. She she died. Yeah. Yes, and uh, and so you know you you have this message and you want to you want to get it out there. And I know sometimes it's hard, like for Dr. Sano and for you, when being a visionary. And you can see everything so clearly, and you're like, yeah. "Wait, why aren't you listening?" Like it's, a, it's hard. So I, I think your journey is going to be managing that, so you know you can go the long haul with this because um, this is really important work, and what you're doing is great. And uh, I can't wait for you to meet Maria, and for us to stay in touch. And uh, yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I think I've got some work to do here. I know I do. So <laughs> Kevin, we and all I are do starting though. We really all do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I've been, you know, for me, it's it, for males. For our, you know, we have mostly female listeners, but we have males too. And I think for the male thing, it's always just like suck it up. And I know yeah. women here suck it up in a different way, but we here are like. It's I, a shame thing if you don't. Yeah, my dad would be like, "Are you yeah. get the f out of bed? Shut up!" <laughs> like you, yeah. you, he would be like, "My dad." <laughs> <laughs> and, and I can't help but I get, I get sucked in. He'd be like, "Are you? Can, are you? Do you see who you're married to? Do you see where you live? Do you see like yeah. your life? Mm-hmm. Shut the f up!" <laughs> and yeah, but... you know what I mean. And, but but you know, yes, those are ramifications. So it, it, so I I just say that if you start putting the work in, and um, I think it really I'm seeing it pay off because I'm. I'm the work. This show's making me do the work because because right. one thing to the last month I was producing it that was helpful, but now like I I have no room but to just I have to laser focus on you guys, <laughs> and it's a lot. Yeah, no choice. But I find myself evolving mm-hmm. every day. I'm making so many different choices. I'm reacting so differently to things because it's really hitting my subconscious. That's great. Um, and it's beautiful. Anyway, all right, so Nicole, yeah, let's definitely keep this conversation going. And, and thank you so much for today. And I, I, I look forward to many more of these. Um, thank you so much for having me. It was so great. Me too. Wow. Uh, great interview with Nicole Sachs. Um, this is something I've believed for a long time, you know, that our emotions do manifest. Yeah. But I never went further with it. Mm-hmm. You know, what are the practices we can do? Um, I know subconscious work with tapping EMDR therapy, but I like that, um, you know, she has a much more, um, tangible plan, yeah, actionable plan yeah. and I like it. Well, what I like about it too, is I liked how much depth she went into with journaling. Cause I think it's an easy thing. That's kind of like skated over a lot. Everyone's like journal, 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 you know, and it's mm-hmm. like, Okay. How is that going to help me? So I like how much detail she went into it. Mm-hmm. And it's the idea of this journal speak is going to lead you into this place that you didn't even know was there, right? This These emotions of like... And, and I think it's so important that you, you throw the thing away. Right. Because you may be right. writing things. I know, like, I don't want anyone to see this. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings around me. I don't... There's a number of different reasons right. why, but it's just for you. Right. And to, to take that time... But I really hang on the, when her, her voice told her what the real problem was, um, I really hang on that. Yeah. And, no, and I that's, agree. but that's going to come with quiet and peace. And uh, yeah, I have a lot of thoughts, you know, about this. I think I like doing it part and parcel with um, EMDR mm. because I think, you know, she is, uh, first of all, she's a psychotherapist. So for her to write this out and have the epiphany right. in the voice, um, I get it because the, first of all, it's her calling, it's her path. She's, you know, and you can see she's very extreme mm-hmm. in her work, very dedicated. Yeah. And I mean that in a great way because that's why great things will come. She, Her thing is going to be not, not allow that to hurt her. Mm. It's a whole other situation. Um, but I think for somebody else, uh, I would... 
recommend trying to work with people that subscribe to Nicole's philosophy. Because I know Nicole doesn't work with anyone now, right. you know. But because maybe you might, they may help you with the where your rage is, where your shame is, where your guilt is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you work with like a patty pen or like a, a tapping person um, that's really gifted at tapping in EMDR, right. now you can cut a patty pen or someone else, you cut them right to the chase. So rather than having to spend all that time with you to try to figure out where your anger, your rage, your guilt, and your shame is, now you bring it to them and say, I've located it. This is where it is. Mm. Now Patty or someone else can have you tapping right Mm. toward that area Yeah, to get it out of you. So yeah, I think this is really important. And um, I know it's affecting you, Kelsey, and I know it affects me too. And I know Maria's tumor and her mother's tumor. Big time. I I mean, she said it, but it affects everyone, right? Everybody. And some people more than others. Like Mm -hmm. I'm Kevin, I feel like you and I are later down the road and that our emotions have actually manifested, right? But every single person, whether yours have manifested or not, you can you can help yeah. it. So, and I really caution a lot of you at some point, even some of you macho men or even like strong women. Yeah. In my life experience, I see the wheels come off the wagon eventually to the best of them. You know, my dad was that guy. He just worked around the clock and mm. he was tough physically. And he shamed himself when he wasn't. He just kept going and going, my dad this, my dad. And then just, boom, when it hit him, it hit him. That was it. Yep. It was over. And it was over fast. So, um, and I'm sure if if he had had, you know, this kind of treatment or this philosophy, things might have been, things would have been differently. So, anyway. So, just another tool in your tool belt. Yes. As she said, as Maria always says, I love that philosophy. So, you guys, thank you so much. Listen, uh, I, our Patreon, I want to shout out to our Patreon community. Um, you know, the community that's there is helping us so much. We did our we did a Patreon last week where we led you in on one of our business meetings. And God, we got so much great feedback. Mm-hmm. So thank you to you and for other people who want to subscribe. Um, we have our heel events that we run through the Patreon. We have ad-free content. And, and now we're actually bringing you in on how the sausage is made. So if you are an entrepreneur or an influencer or someone who wants to be that, you know, I, I, I'm blessed to get some really good top 1% information from my agents, lawyers, and the other people I work with. And yeah, and we're sharing it all with you guys. But, um, That's right. in the meantime, the, you know, as Maria, you know, continues to deal with, uh, her mom and everything else in her life, the best way you can help us is by, you know, staying with us. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already, but tell friends to do so um that would be great and uh if you're listening then um yeah ha- please have more friends subscribe and comment and those things would help us a lot and on um yeah every day we're just getting a little better i feel like a little better kelsey agreed amen kelsey and the poodle in my lap agree with her new haircut Wow, you know, look how yeah. beautiful she is, everyone. She oh, does. she doesn't want to turn around now, but she looks so beautiful. Look how cute she, she came out really nice. Yeah. A little home haircut we gave her. Yeah. Well, Kels, until then, what? Everyone, be nice people, make good choices, and be present.